Okay, hello everyone. My name is Pascal. My job today is to talk a little bit about fillets, uh, what they are, how they're generated, and a little bit about how to think about them uh, so that the various filleting commands in Rhino can be more useful to you. You can be uh, have an idea how those fillets are generated. So first of all, what is a fillet? Uh, we say fillet, it's generally we're talking about a transition surface uh, between primary surfaces. So when you design an object, normally at the end you'll want to go around and finish the edges. So you can see here where my pointer is, the edges are rounded off and cleaned up as a kind of finishing process to the design uh, before it goes off to production or for rendering, whatever it might be. Typically, uh, filleting is a last minute, so to speak, uh, operation. It's something you've done late in the game when the larger elements of the design are, are complete and you now need to just finish the job and make it look clean and nice and all those things that, that are uh, so important in design. But that's not the only place a fillet is used. If you look in the upper left of this image where my pointer is, there's a kind of transition surface there between the cylinder and the uh, larger object that is also a fillet, but it's, uh, it's here, in this context, it's part of the design. It's, it's a larger surface and it is more uh, contributing to the overall design. So fillets can be used in a variety of ways, but most often it's a, a something that's done more or less at the end of the process. Um, so that's what a fillet is, and let's look at how they work uh, in terms of geometry. So a fillet, we're, we'll be talking mostly about what we call rolling ball fillets. Rolling ball fillets are uh, kind of a, the most basic, the most commonly used, I would say, uh, type of fillet. There are more complex versions of filleting, but for now we'll just look at a rolling ball because it kind of underlies uh, the rest of the thinking that we might have about fillets. So by rolling ball, what do I mean? Well, if we have two surfaces and we want to uh, generate a transition surface between them, a smooth surface um, like this one, uh, Rhino, to calculate that surface, has to figure out where it goes. Where do those edges fall so that this nice, smooth surface in between can be uh, smoothly connected to the input surfaces, right? And it turns out that a way to think about that or the, a way to specify that is by thinking about rolling balls. So if I turn off that surface and put a marble in there between those two surfaces, that is the same radius. So when you create a fillet, typically you'll, you'll uh, generate the fillet according to a given radius or in some cases multiple radii, but you give it a, a number that's a radius. And that number in this case is 10. And so if we put a ball between these two surfaces that has radius 10, so it just touches. So it's just as if gravity were just kind of letting it roll into that crack between the two surfaces, it's going to touch at one point right in here, and it's going to touch again at some point right up in here. And if we take that ball and roll it along between these two surfaces, those points will connect the dots, so to speak, and create a curve, create a, a line or a curve along the surface that it turns out is the rail of the fillet that we eventually build. Right? So it's just a way of thinking about it. Rhino doesn't, of course, roll a ball along, but it's a way of sort of understanding a little bit about why it's called a rolling ball fillet and how those rails are generated. So if you roll the ball along and you get more and more of them, they start, start to sort of connect together and create a, a pipe or a tube that lays exactly on each of the input surfaces that, at, at that radius. And if you look at just that pipe, you can see that it corresponds very nicely to the fillet surface that Rhino eventually creates. So Rhino doesn't do all that, but that's a way, again, to think about how that works and, and how a rolling ball fillet is generated. So it turns out, I'll turn off my uh, fillet, it turns out that if you offset the two input surfaces by the same amount as the radius of your fillet, like so, the intersection between those offsets 
creates a curve right here that it turns out is the center line of that pipe so when Rhino's thinking about making a fillet it's actually offsetting surfaces and generating intersections in order to create this curve to then work off of that to generate the fillet surface so that is one reason that offsetting and intersecting is actually a pretty serious part of the filleting process okay. so once that Once that center line is found, then it's pretty easy to create the rails from that by sucking this curve down to each of the surfaces. And that, it turns out, is exactly on the rail of the uh, eventual surface. Okay, So that's a, how a rolling ball fillet is generated, or how, how, how conceptually, at least, it's generated. And that is true for Rhino Command's fillet surf fillet edge, uh, and to a certain extent variable versions of those as well, but we'll look at those in much more detail later in a different uh, clip.